What's going on everybody? Liam O'Reilly, Vermont Economic Realtor with Jerry Riley Real Estate. I hope you're doing well. Today we're gonna to take a look at active listings and new listings, taking a look at the historical data to help us better understand where we are in the housing market today and why there are such few listings on the market. Obviously the lock-in effect is a big factor uh, where people are don't wanna sacrifice their seven or their 3% mortgage for a 7% mortgage and, and move into a more expensive home. It just doesn't make financial sense for a lot of sellers right now. But if we take a look at historical data, we'll see that inventory has really been shrinking uh, ever since the great financial crisis. And uh, I really, I, I first noticed this when I was looking at the active inventory here in Vermont relative to new listings. Um, and I noticed a, a pretty big discrepancy. So I'm going to start there and then we're going to move into some national numbers and talk about how, how inventory is being affected and the general trends of things. So when we look here, active inventory, this is for the whole state of Vermont. So we can see at the peak in 2014, we were at about 10,000 listings. Now we're at just under 1,200. So we're looking at about an 88% decrease in listings, which is which is very significant. And you can see this happened well before the lock-in effect was, was in place, well before inventory, or excuse me, affordability was so high when interest rates dropped, right? People people forget that that in 2020 and 2021, uh, homes were generally affordable. Although people were bidding them up and there wasn't much inventory, things were going crazy, uh, the people that were purchasing the homes, uh, the, their, their monthly payment was much more affordable than where things are today. Uh, and that's where you see the, the straight downward trend in inventory that I'm highlighting now. Uh, that was when the pandemic happened when rates first dropped and when we saw the housing market start to take off. But if we look at even before then, you know, from 2014 to 2019, the peaks of both years, we saw almost a 50% decrease in inventory here in Vermont. So buyers were already outpacing supply, outpacing new listings, because if new listings were coming to the market at, at an adequate rate, uh, uh, for buyers, right? If if for every buyer out there, there was a new listing for them to purchase, active inventory would remain the same. But that's not what we saw. We saw a surplus of buyers relative to the inventory coming to the market relative to the new listings, which is why active listings have decreased and what we're seeing in this chart. Now, furthermore, when we take a look at new listings, this is what made me think about the lock-in effect. And it's going to take a second to load here. But what you'll see is from the peak of new listings, which was actually in 2015, not 2014, we have seen listings drop by about 50%, a little over 50% since 2015. So while active inventory has gone down significantly, has gone down about 90%, new listings, while they've gone down significantly as well, they've been cut in half. Uh, it's, it's far from that 90% number that we saw uh, with the active inventory. So what this tells me is that look, the lock-in effect is real and it's part of what's keeping uh, new listings you know, low and keeping new inventory coming to the market about half of what we saw at its peak in 2015. But at the same time, this historical trend of more buyers, more demand than there are homes for sale has, has been going on for years now, especially here in Vermont and I think on a national level too. So if we take a look at some of the national trends here, we're gonna go over to national housing inventory. Now, it was really tough to find new listing data, but this housing inventory I think is is very telling and it tells a similar story to Vermont, although it's not as extreme. So, we can see it's the peak of inventory was in around 2007 here, right at the height of or right at the start of the great financial crisis, um when people were were building like crazy and then all of a sudden demand fell off a cliff. So, you know, we saw inventory slowly come down from 2007 spike back up in 2010 at the peak of the foreclosure crisis. And then we've seen it drop ever since. So, you know, it remained relatively stable in 2013, 2014 into 2015, but you can see that downward trend. You can see people, you know, there was more buyers out there on the market than there were new listings coming to the market, thus inventory started to deplete. And now you can see where we are. You can see the pandemic there, clearly that, that line of 2020 and then inventory continuing to decrease past that. So part of the reason behind that are the lack of new builds and, and really the trauma that a lot of builders experience after the great financial crisis. When we take a look at, this is historical new privately owned housing unit starts by uh, Fred, the St. Louis Fed. 
um, we take a look at how, you know, we, we were just building like crazy. Home builders were building like crazy, basically from 1990 all the way up until the great financial crisis in 2006. Now, I think they saw demand drop off in 2006 before prices really came down. And that's why, you know, new housing starts started to fall off the cliff as we rolled into 2007 and 2008. And now if we look at the last 15 years here, we've seen new home starts well under what they were uh, from that period of 1990 to 2007 when the great financial crisis happened. So I think, you know, we, we way underbuilt over the past few years and a big narrative that a lot of people were pushing um, before the whole lock-in effect and before the rate hikes went crazy was that we've underbuilt uh, for the for the past 10 years. And now something else to, to keep in mind is you have to remember in, in 2010, there were 2.9 million foreclosures. And a lot of those people, you know, were in really tough financial positions, but have since recovered and now have hopped back into the home buying market. Um, and it doesn't take far to, to, you don't have to search too hard to find somebody who is in that position, somebody who lost their home during the great financial crisis, and then purchased their home recently within the past five years or so. You know, basically, I, I think what happens, what we're seeing now is this is this perfect storm of home buyers all coming together where we have uh, the millennial generation, which are a lot of first time home buyers, a large generation of first time home buyers that are now reaching home buyer age and want, wanting to purchase properties. At the same time, we're having people who have recovered from the great financial crisis and are moving in to, to purchase their properties again. And then we have the baby boomers that are retiring and are looking to purchase especially those starter home properties, which is really keeping inventory inventory low. So the point that I'm trying to make in this video here is that while the lock-in effect is, is significant and it is keeping people in their homes, and we see that with new listings, we see that new listings are down, especially when we go over to Redfin's data here. So this is Redfin's historical data of, of new listings. It only goes back to 2020, but we see almost a 30% decrease in new listings from 2020, which is this red line here, 109,000 new listings to where we are today in 2023 at about 82,000 new listings. So, you know, about a 30% decrease in new listings. And that a lot of that has to do with the lock-in effect. But a big reason why inventory is so low is because there's kind of this perfect storm of, of a lot of people looking for homes right now and not that much inventory on the market because we've underbuilt for so many years. Um, now, this is this is my theory about what's going on and, and a big part of the narrative before the lock-in effect was popular was that we've underbuilt for the past few years and that's why the housing market went crazy when rates dropped during the pandemic. Now, a big part about why they went crazy, I, I think as well, has to do with the demand side is there was a lot of people who wanted to get in on buying a home and when rates dropped they become it became much more affordable especially with the pause on student loan payments and with um the uh stimulus checks that got pushed into the economy now i'm going to be doing another video shortly here talking about debts and the student loan payments and, and how that's going to affect the housing market but i think it's important to understand why inventory is so low and it doesn't just have to do with the lock-in effect. It's, it was trending down for, for years. And we can clearly see that in the data. So uh, anyway, Liam O'Reilly, Vermont Economic Realtor. If you are looking to buy or sell a home anywhere across the country, reach out to me directly. I would love to help you. Uh, if Let me know what you guys think about this video. Leave me a comment. I love reading your comments. I learned so much from you folks. Um, other than that, I'll see you in the next video.